Uh, hello. I'm Morse Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor, and today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, folding paper cups, we might say. Something that's transferable to the uh, birch bark and other barks. There's so many things that you can do. I'm an outdoor educator and there are many times we take the opportunity to substitute materials uh, that are readily available for training and then when the time comes for you to use the real material in the forest uh, you've eliminated most of the problem about how to configure that material to whatever you're trying to do here. We could pretend that this is a piece of birch bark but it's actually freezer wrap paper and freezer wrap paper comes in many thicknesses and this is probably about as thick as it gets but if you're going to do this realize that when you shop for it you want to find stuff that uh, is as thick as possible uh, and the uh, thinner stuff will work too but this here seems to uh, be more effective and a paper cutter I found in my career was almost indispensable I would say that the paper cutter chainsaw uh, photocopier, if you're an outdoor educator like, like uh, I have had the opportunity to do, those things became indispensable eventually in your line of work. Now here with this industrial paper cutter I can cut strips for basket weaving and I will at some time perhaps uh, um, um, demonstrate on how to weave simple baskets. Here I'm going to reduce this a bit in order that I have four square pieces and the paper cutter <coughs> can't handle these widths so effectively so we will trim everything down. It takes a long time to do this with scissors and the accuracy uh, is very great <coughs> and the uh, the squareness of your materials and here to make something perfectly square we set it up. It's not necessary but uh, in the interest of neatness so now we have four pieces to work with. To make a, a paper cup which is we're using paper that's very glossy on one side and normal paper on the other. Of all I know this is a coating of polyethylene or whatever but at any rate this developed perhaps from being waxed <coughs> and so people who wrap meat and so on in freezers have developed this industrial resource. By having the shiny side in you've got something that's waterproof and can be used for days I suppose and you make your first fold diagonally into a triangle. Then the next fold is um, so that this and this is parallel and of course the third fold gives you this. Now if this is made with a piece of canvas that maybe is this length to the square, this length to the side, that was used for carrying large amounts of water. It is folded in the same way. This corner is pinned down and then safety pins or big pins were used and with this part you held it and you had this uh, container that you could sling over your back and carry water for putting out fires and it was very common let's say 100 or 200 years ago uh, to use sailcloth and use that as a means for transporting water. Well here now I have a rather this is a coffee cup size so that you find that you can now use this for drinking coffee probably all day. Uh, there's little folds in there. But working with kids, this is where I put the tinder and the rock and the hacksaw blade for fire lighting and they ha instant have a kind of a uh, specimen uh, or a container. Uh, I find this has many applications. All you have to do is realize that one day you say, oh I need an envelope, I need a container, specimen container, I need this or that and you bring this up so it's turned out to be very handy in my career. Some of these you take the inner fold and you tuck it in and then this acts almost like a simple envelope. In some cases you maybe even drive a staple in the corner and uh, then you can 
uh, use it for many things. Now another thing that is often done with, with stiffer paper is the folding of a box. <clears throat> this may be a piece of aluminum so you might end up making a cooking pot and in the future when I discuss pots and cooking without pots and so on we will uh, also have a little bit to say about it then in, a, in another, another uh, exposure. Here we take and we mark the midpoint that way by folding and then when we make a fold I'll make the two So there I've made the fold past the middle and then I fold it back to the middle. And to continue, we, we find after a while that you get quite adept at this. Grade kindergarten kids and grade threes, they catch on very quickly. So there is the end result of our numerous folds. Then you take the corners. This again can be done with birch bark if it's thin enough. To make a basket. Now with working with aluminum you can't have this rim <coughs> but you will see how a pot is made in a separate video. There I have now made the four corners have been folded and if this was the right dimension which you have to juggle in order to create a pot this is the way it stays and it fits in, in your uh, um, vest or whatever and when you need the pot you pull it apart and you end up having this sort of effect and when you are building birch bark baskets you essentially use the same approach to create very accurate folds and corners now, this is done in stiff cardboard like cornflakes boxes and so on it's actually more spectacular we often take strips that help stiffen now there could be a strip here with a hole in it it's packed in your kit it slips under here and your handle goes in the hole then you slip it like this and you've got the hanger for hanging but this will be done in actually in actuality with um, um, the aluminum so you will see the full approach to creating a, a simple pot that is uh, collapsible so that it hardly interferes with your <coughs> carrying things because bulk and pots are so difficult to stow. A useful thing to know and I would say that this has served me well for a great deal of my career.